this mic is because it speaks to the video camera, okay? So we can hear it well. You can't hear it. You, you're only going to hear me. Um, I'm going to ask, or we're going to do this as a conversation in some places. And I'm going to go through, we have a whole bunch of slides, so I'll go through the slides, and you guys tell me to speed up or slow down or stop on a slide, because we got 50 slides there, we can't go through them all, right? So I have a plan, and we're going to talk about those things that, that most people are interested in. By, by the response of people in here, okay? Um, when you have a question, I'm going to try to get you to talk into this just so we can record the question, and then we're going to go forward. Does that sound fair? All right, so here's the subject. I think everybody, I've talked about the subject with everybody, so I think I know what we're doing. If, um, if I can get this to work. Okay, we will have all the information at this spot on the website. But if you can just get to Westbrook Stevens, I'll have a link to it. There'll be Westbrook Stevens backslash business underline space intelligence uh, dot htm. And that's where all this material will be. Every one of these slides are narrated, not every slide, but most of the slides are narrated. So as you get to that, it'll probably take me a couple days to set this up. But in, in a week, as you get to it, you'll be able to hear narrations on every slide we don't go over. So if you want to spend more time or you can click past it, whatever you want to do. But you'll have the slides on the website and you'll also have the videotape on the website so you'll have a bunch of different ways to look at it later. Does that sound fair? Okay, now you're going to participate with this, right? And you're going to help me. Now here's some of the information came from these people. Now Ralph, of course, Jim is, is my Ralph contact. He's, he's a He's going to be our, our uh, co-facilitator if we need it related to the BI work. So, uh, so Jim's ready to add some uh, information as we need it. And I, as I was talking to different people, there are people here that have backgrounds in business intelligence and backgrounds in project management and a whole bunch of other things. So we're going to, add, we're going to ask you to participate in the discussions because what's in your head is a lot more than what I can bring. So we're going to ask you guys to participate when you can, or when you want to. Uh, here's the subjects. We're first going to talk about change management. We're going to look at the phases. We're going to talk about those phases and those life cycles of project management. We're going to probably skip over that a little bit and just make sure we're all on the same page. And then we're going to look at BA, and we'll probably spend a little bit of time on that. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time on business intelligence. That sound fair? And we'll spend as much time as you guys want. But there's so much material here that I'm just going to give you a background. Here is uh, a good place to start. Murphy's Law. Things will get worse before they get better. Now the picture for that is this. You start off one place, and you'll see this picture many, many times. But you start off one place, and you're trying to get to another place, right? And that place is a vision. It's like the caterpillar to the butterfly. You're trying to get to that vision. But you're going through a cocoon stage. A lot of people call that cocoon stage the valley of despair. But that's kind of a misnomer because not all changes will lead to a valley of despair, but all changes will have that dip. And if you can imagine young kids coming into the office and you give them a new piece of software or a new piece of hardware, they're not despairing it. Not like our grandparents are, like I was when I first saw it. But they're actually excited about it because they grew up with this stuff changing. You give somebody a new phone and they're excited about it. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. All right. This is a bigger picture of it. We're going to look at before, during, and after as those phases that we're going to compare everything to. And that natural cocoon stage. Now this slide is kind of interesting because if you implement a change 
within your organization, you may see a big splash where you implement it, but you're going to see waves throughout the whole organization a lot of times. And maybe throughout the whole industry, if you, if you do enough changes in, in the product line to make a paradigm shift. So now those waves may not be as critical up front and may not be as, as drastic up front, but you're going to see these waves. So this curve actually goes through the process of, of, of coming back and, and, and bringing a little bit of, the, of, of pain with it over a period of time. You may see ups and downs over a period of time. It's kind of three-dimensional. It's not two-dimensional. Okay. Now, the curve it can also be represented by a J-curve. And you guys work with risk with project management sometimes, right? Okay, J-curve looks kind of like this. If you're a really good company, you have a real narrow J-curve. You can't get away from it because that's return on investment. If you spend money, you spend money. And if you make money, you get a return on investment, right? So if you're a good company, your J-curve is going to look tight. <coughs> If you're the average company, your J-curve is going to be spread out because you're trying to figure out how to make this change happen. And you're trying to trial and error sometimes, so it takes a little bit longer for it to happen. And then some things just never bring a return on investment. So that's the nature of change, right? Some things will just not bring a uh, return on investment. So that all looks kind of like that picture, doesn't it? That's, where we're, that's the J-curve. That's directly related to that. If we wanted to compare that change to a product life cycle, then here's what you might see. You have development, introduction, growth, and maturity, and that's your revenue. It doesn't start off right now because what you don't see yet is the profit. Profit's going to be less than revenue, but if you're really smart about it, as you start declining in the use of that product, as customers no longer want that product, you can still make a profit on it. Okay, does that make sense? Now, this is all the change part, and once we get a feel for change, then we'll also go a little further. Now, this is really confusing. Anybody ever heard of Peter Singe and the fifth discipline? One of the laws of systems is things will get better before they get worse. Now, I thought things were going to get worse before they get better. How can both of those occur at the same time? And here's that picture, right? Things get worse before they get better. And remember that product life cycle? Every product, every business has a downturn eventually, and the only way to get past that is continuously improve. Well, that's what we're talking about with this system process. When you make what Peter Singe was talking about, if you make a poor change, things get worse before they get better initially, but things get better before they get worse eventually. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is all the change stuff. All right, now, we're going to see this bar over and over, and we see that picture over and over. This is before the change, during the change, and after the change. So we're going to start comparing those. Okay, the things we're going to compare is project management, BA, and BI. We're going to look at different phases in project management, and this is the part we'll probably go over real quick, just get everybody on the same page. And we'll